Look at this string of flat black stones. They're matte black. Not matte like me, like amazing, but matte like M-A-T-T-E. Ignore my purple fingers I got in a wrestling match with a purple octopus. And suffice to say, he's pretty bruised up right now, but I think he learned his lesson. Anyway, um, I was going to take each one of these and make like a simple kind of masculine pendant because it's black and I could just do like antique brass. But then I was like, they all look so good together. I think I want to make like a cool necklace that could be for like a woman's evening gown type thing or even just funky crazy whatever I don't know but let's just have fun with this luckily they do fit 18 gauge although this would work with 20 gauge also and I, I want to do some nice earth tones we got antique copper and what's basically antique brass or vintage bronze however they want to call it these are both from Parawire and let's go I'm gonna use these two to make each a separate simple kind of more masculine necklace and then I'm gonna use these to make one big pretty more a little more feminine necklace so let's do these first the antique brass or bronze or vintage bronze whatever and these are just simple they're drilled through from top to bottom which is really I think the easiest type to wrap and I'm just gonna take um, a little more than a foot that's it put this through to the middle bend it bend it put a loop at the top and we're off to the races let's fold that like that just to lock it in better and now for masculine because this is kind of a triangle already and then I want to make this a little more masculine I'm gonna to try to make as best I can sharp corners and straight lines and that happens more or less so we're not going to knock ourselves out, but we'll do our best. So I'm very carefully trying to make these. Now when you do a spiral, they almost always turn out round, no matter how much you try to make them square. But we'll do our best. I'm just pinching sharp. So I have those interlocking there. And then I'm going to bend them around each other. And as I bend them more and more around each other, they're going to turn more round. But again, that's okay. We'll forgive ourselves for this. Another thing you can do, you could take your wire ahead of time and just put a whole bunch of crimps in it and make it like a zigzag and then work with it. Well, put it through the stone first because you'll have trouble getting it through. But once you have the two ends sticking out, put a whole bunch of crimps and then you'll have like a zigzag effect. Then no matter where you put it, it's already going to look a little bit sharp. But let's pull this a little tighter. Yeah, I kind of like that. Now let's see. What shall we do here? We'll make this guy zigzag up to the top as sharp lines as now you can you you could really get in there with the pliers and make super sharp corners i'm not going to be a stickler with that I just get the general idea that this is a little bit less whimsical and freeform smooth curves as i would usually do for a more feminine piece so so now i'm going to wrap it around the top lock that in there this one i think i'm going to fold it over but i want it to come back up that way no i'll have this one come down the back because i want this one to come up and do something a little bit more right there. Um, flatten that a little bit. Try not to scratch it when you flatten it. So this piece, you know what? I'm just gonna have him come up and mirror the other one. But I'll have him piece out like right there so he doesn't get all the way up to the top. This one, I mean, I don't want that showing right there. So let's get this guy let's crimp that up drag that all the way over there there we go okay all right we'll get to you in a second let's finish up with this one we'll have him come around here and he will start to scarf there okay now this this guy here again i want this tighter He's not even fully scarfing yet. You gotta go all the way around once. Okay, maybe twice. All right, now this guy is gonna come here and just two turns and then he's gonna piece out like right there. Maybe we'll do one more little
it's totally going the wrong way now. There we go, that's better, okay. Come from this side, come from here, and then piece out right there, okay. Make that a little... Okay, I like that, nice and rustic. Looks kind of caveman-ish. Feeling that. He'll come up here and meet the other one, scarfing the other way. Let's let's finish this one off first. Let's tuck him in. Tucking that sharp end right into there. And then this guy will finish wrapping the top loop coming the other direction. And cut. Tuck. And did I make this a little bit too fancy? Maybe. Let's pull this. That needs to come over there like that. I want that tighter. Uh, this one also needs to be tighter like that. All right. And I'll make this one match all the others. There we go. That's not too bad. It's kind of rustic, kind of caveman-y. I like it. Let's do one more. And we'll have our two men's necklaces. Okay, there's those two. So we're basically gonna make each of these into a slightly different link, and then just link them together with jump rings and some chain. And it's just, I don't know, I suppose you can arrange them first, try to get the biggest one in the middle and so on, or you can just have them be swinging all together in any particular manner of way or so. But uh, looks about right. So we take one and don't take too much. Again, about a foot. Bring it to the middle. Only difference is when we make our bend in our bend like we normally do, is we're going to take two, make two loops. One this way. Remember, I always make my loop going the backwards, the opposite way of which the way I just bent the wire, because that gives you that evens out both sides so the loop ends up in the middle instead of the loop hanging off to one side. Now these loops don't need to be really big and if you make them tighter then all the pieces will be closer together which might look kind of nicer. So we're going to roll them a little bit smaller and we're going to bend each one 180. Twist each one rather. You know, be careful when you twist one it, it tends to bend the other side too so you got to hold the other side still or, or bend it back. So they're both like that. Okay, got that. Now it's basically just we're going to cross these, and this time we're going to put the swirl in the middle of the stone, but it doesn't have to be perfect. So fold those over and then have these two wires chase each other around. And just go around as, basically as many times as you want. But if you make one a little different than another, like don't really fret. Just let it go. And, and then the only variation I would do with these stones is just how much of a little swirly swirl you want to, or rather loop, or not even swirl or loop, but curvy curve you want to put in each little bit of wire as it comes back up. To the top here and you can make these look more uh, curvy curve by pulling them tighter like that but eventually you're gonna end up right here and wrap it a few times around the loop once you've gone enough around enough times cut it halfway across so your tab can be tucked in like a cute little like that's a bowl and you're just tucking that in do the same on this side, but see the swirl is closer to this side. So this side really isn't going to have any. I, mean, I could try to squeeze in one like that, and that's kind of cool. Or I could even, even try to squeeze in two like that. Right? It's not bad. And then make my, wrap my loop. And that's pretty much it. Just make each one. You can make each one the same or a little fancier, but taking the stress off of yourself of having to make each one look super identical makes it a lot more fun. And then boom, we just link them together.